Hi, this is Bitluni and today I will take you on my journey how I try to recharge my electric car without grid power and how I had to modify this power bank to do so. This video is sponsored by Anchor. If you are following my channel, you've probably seen some of my solar projects where I use grid tie inverters to reduce my base power consumption. These have been quite successful so far, but I'm limited to 600 watts here in Germany. Anything above that requires a proper installation, but I can't do this in this house because it's a rental. I didn't try an off-grid solution yet because I can basically change anything here in this house. Since we don't want any fossil fuels, we got a small electric car and now I want to recharge that, but really at the lowest price possible. Even though the energy prices are really scammy at the moment, it's still the cheapest to charge at home with an AC charger like this here. So I thought why not use the AC charger during good weather to recharge the car. The problem is that the 600 watt limit basically limits also the amps that I can put in my grid. I was able to measure good to amps after all the conversion losses. But the AC chargers have some current specification and the lowest current you can go is 6 amps. The most chargers wouldn't even go lower than 8 amps, but I was able to find this on AliExpress. I linked it below if you want to have one. So the best I can do is to get like 2 amps from the solar and 4 amps from the grid. Which is already okay since I can reduce the charging cost by one third. However, I wanted to recharge the car without any electricity from the grid at all. The best way would be to have a battery buffer that I can recharge slowly with solar and then dump all the energy at once in my car. And this is where Anchor comes into play. They asked me if I want to test their 757 power bank. It's a beast! <laughs> and I told them that's what I need for my project right now. So this isn't a regular review, I really put it into use. But no worries, I tested it with all my power tools and also as a USB for my PC, but more on that later. What's important for my use case right now is that it's able to output 1500 watts AC constantly and even 2000 peak in my test for a short amount of time. The other feature is that you can not only charge it really quickly with 1000 watts from AC, but it has also a built-in MPPT charge controller on the back. This one supports up to 30 volts at 10 amps. You can charge it from anything as long as it doesn't exceed the 30 volts limit. But no worries, there is a protection. There is protection on everything in this device. So that's why they are able to give you like 5 years warranty on that. So we can recharge the 1200 watt hour slowly from the solar and then dump all the energy at 6 amp AC into my car. After the battery is empty, we can recharge it again and repeat the whole cycle. But first let's test how far we can get with 1200 watt hours. First of all I recharged the power bank completely. Oh yeah. And I brought it to my car, plugged in the AC charger and turned the AC on. It immediately started charging at 1400 watts. And that's actually the 6 amps that we require. The sides of the power bank have huge grills. This allows the air to enter at one side and exit at the other side. So this cooling solution allows this quick charge and discharge. I came back 50 minutes later and the battery bank was already discharged. I checked the range again and we got about 8 kilometers from the complete charge. So you actually could use this power bank as a range extender and maybe help a friend at the side of the road somewhere. So the charging worked. As a next step I wanted to test the MPPT charge controller. I used the included XT60 cable to connect my old 100 watt solar panel. There are specific anchor solar panels that you can get with this device but I didn't get those. This panel has an open circuit voltage of 18 volts, which is within the 30 volts that are supported. It is even able to recharge while discharging at the AC outlet. I noticed a bug though, when I turn off the AC sometimes it shows 0 watts input. But my current meter at the solar panel is still showing some current flowing. So I guess it's still recharging. On the next day I tested it at noon and it was able to recharge at 95 watts. So this 100 watt panel would recharge the missing 33% of the charge within 4.6 hours. I wanted to test one of my big 300 watts panels from the roof. <laughs> okay. 
The open circuit voltage of my big panel is unfortunately 36 volts. This exceeds the input limit, but I wanted to test it anyways. It simply turns off. But I thought maybe we can try a DC to DC converter in between. I only found a small one which supports up to 6 amps. I set it to 30 volts so we can use the most of the 10 amps input limit. Cranked up the current, but unfortunately it was limited by the DC to DC converter. I didn't get more than 160 watts. But the converter really worked and shortened the remaining charging time to 2.5 hours. We had some overcast during the day so it took longer than this. But at the end the power bank was full at around 5 o'clock in the evening. So I guess with the right panels or a bigger DC to DC converter, you can get at least one charge per day from the solar. What we learned so far is that when the power bank is discharged completely, it turns off the AC output. And this is a physical button, so if we want to repeat the charge and discharge cycle, we need to push the button. And there is also the problem that we need to know when the power bank is charged completely to start the discharge. There is no remote or Bluetooth connectivity with it, so we need to read the display. On top of that, the display turns off after a while, so you have to push the button to see what the charge is. This sounds a little bit familiar. I wonder if there is a project that I did once before. It's the washing machine automation project. I love it. It's one of my favorite projects. So check it out if you didn't see it yet. We can use servo motors to push the physical buttons and use light dependent resistors to read from the display. The display fortunately has five bars that indicate the charge status. So I let the device push the button for the displays, use five LDRs to read the status of the charge and act accordingly. If we are in the charging mode, we can charge until let's say 80%, then switch to the discharging mode where we turn on the AC output with the physical button and then discharge until 20%, turn off the AC output and then we can repeat the cycle indefinitely. Since I want some connectivity later but also good ADCs, I designed an ESP32 S3 board. There were none available at this time and I thought with the built-in USB that should be easy. As always I ordered my boards and the stencil at Eisler. They manufacture locally and ship within a week. Check them out as they have competitive prices and are so kind to support these projects. You can use the coupon code BOARDLOONY until the end of this year. The assembly was quite simple, since there were only a few components. You can of course use any other off-the-shelf ESP boards for that if you like to copy my project. The code is also linked below. The LDR circuit is quite simple. The LDR has a resistance between 0 and 100k ohm depending on how bright the light is. The brighter, the lower the resistance. You basically make a voltage divider with the LDR and the resistor in series. And sure enough it worked. I designed the actuators and the simple sensor plate in Blender and printed it. For the servos I just used the LED controller and basically implemented a function to push the button. You can probably just use the pure servo with a servo horn. But I like these 3D printed attachments with these fingers. You know how I hate jumper wire so let's transfer it to a perf board. I finished the prototype and used some sticky tape to attach it to the display. After that I basically took some readings and was able to detect the current charging state. When it's charging you can see here the individual steps of the animated bars. So basically you have just to scan the display for some time to detect what it's doing now and what the current charging state is. 
Cool. This is the last step before we can test it. So, let's test it. Oh, sweet. Now that it works, we can even power it from the power bank itself. It detects that it's fully charged and turns on the AC output. Cool. But before we do the final test, let me do the review part, because I think this power bank is capable of more than you can imagine. I started with the simple test like fast charging from the USB-C. The upper port supports up to 100 watts output, so it can drive my TS-80 soldering iron no problems. Since I'm interested in using it on a construction site, I had to test every single available power tool at home. Heat gun, shop vacuum, jigsaw, power drill, circular saw, power planer, angle grinder, the sander, the 3D printer, water pump, hatch trimmer, garden trimmer, leaf blower, the compressor. The only thing that it had problems with was this metal saw. The initial power was simply too high, but I turned it to a lower power at the start and then increased the power later. That worked. Of course I can also use it to recharge my crazy pocket bike and all the other power tools that I got. And here it is powering the oscilloscope that's measuring the sine wave output. Of course you can use it for camping as I do. I wouldn't go anywhere without my dinner grill. And that one runs at 1400 watts. But I think the best use case I tested with this device is the USB mode. I'm not only able to run my complete PC setup with four screens, an additional C64 with CRT, the lights and speakers from that device, but I can also plug in the AC input and remove it again without any interruption. So you can use it as a buffer between your PC and servers and so on to have uninterrupted power. It's even recharging when the power is back on. I mean here in Germany we don't have many power outages. But this winter might be grim. People bought electric heaters like crazy here. I hope you can see the potential as I do for off-grid but also on-grid operation of this device. Thanks to Anker for sponsoring that. And now back to our tests. I put it in a garage in the shadow. Connected the solar, the AC charger and now the controller. It triggered the display, detected that it's fully charged and immediately turned on the AC output. Cool. Once it reached 20%, it turned off again and started the recharging cycle. From this 80% we got 6 kilometers of range. Let's see what happens when the charging cycle reaches 80%. And there you go, it turns on the AC again. Yes. My conclusion is it works, but it might not be the best and most convenient solution yet. If you are interested in stuff like that, consider subscribing and maybe even supporting my channel. Thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. Great thanks to all my supporters and I see you next time. Bye!